Hello, I hope you're doing well enough. Today I'd like to share some thoughts about the latest news regarding the anti-abortion laws in the US. I've been seeing online many, many people wondering why would someone be fundamentally against abortion and a lot of rock throwing from side to side. First of all, a disclaimer. I'm not defending who's right or wrong, I'm not judging, I'm not, not diagnosing. I'm just trying to provide some helpful insight. To begin with, we must understand that anti-abortionists are not necessarily against women nor against freedom of choice, for the simple reason that these concepts are not part of their thought process. They may use these words in their speech, but unconsciously they mean something quite different than in the speech of someone who is pro-abortion. And the big problem with discussions between anti and pro is that both parts use the same exact keywords without realizing they give them very different meaning and treat them with a different thought process. On one hand, we have pre-symbolic thinking. On the other, we have symbolic thinking. These concepts are explored by many psychoanalysts and explained with different theories, but I believe the formulations of Melanie Klein and Wilfred Bien explain this quite effectively. When we are newborns, we experience a constellation of anxieties, defense mechanisms, and a condition in which our existence is totally dependent on others, because, well, you know, we're kind of helpless when we are babies. And this last part is very important. These may continue to a greater or lesser extent into adulthood, depending on how strong our aggressive impulses are, how tolerant we are to frustration, and whether the good experiences we go through prevail over the frustrating ones. Klein divides the development of our personality into two main stages or positions, the paranoid schizoid and the, the depressive. The depressive stage doesn't mean we are depressed, it means we matured enough to recognize others as separate from oneself and we became able to tolerate the ambivalences of life. A healthy person would be in the depressive stage without being clinically depressed. The key to understanding a fundamental hate towards abortion or any other radical positioning lies in understanding an interruption in the transition between these two positions, which keeps the person mostly stuck in the paranoid schizoid stage. When we are children and we are suffering a great deal of anxiety caused by the combination of our aggressive drives with the experiences of frustration, our very, very rudimentary ego operates with primitive mechanisms like fantasies of splitting and projection. These are two separate ones. In simple terms, it means that children may dilute anxiety by breaking down the experience and others into smaller pieces and projecting their hate into those pieces. This results in the confusion between the child and the other person, and the child feels threatened by the hate himself projected into the other. An example of this in grown-up terms would be something like you calmly telling me I was wrong about thinking the earth is flat, and you'd show me scientific proof of that. My reaction would be feel angry that you don't agree with me, and unconsciously assume that you also feel that same hatred for me, and that's why you attacked my opinion, that's why you attacked me. I'd be splitting you in two forgetting what I previously liked about you and seeing you only as a bad, aggressive, dangerous person. And as long as you held the opinion that I'm wrong, I would hate you and feel threatened because I'd feel, I'd feel vulnerable to your feelings towards me. From then on, I'd feel a, bit, a little bit paranoid that you might hold things against me. In this process, omnipotence and idealization are needed to manage the primitive anxieties. Bad experiences are completely, completely denied and my beliefs are idealized and exaggerated as a protection against the fear of persecution. Bian refers to this as hate towards knowledge, and that shows as arrogance and ignorance. When arrogant, we don't want to learn from experience, and we can perceive science as something neutral, beyond anybody's opinion. If you believe in science, then science is as much as your opinion as my belief in flat earth, for example. And once we hate knowledge, our perception of life will be single-layered, with only one right way of doing things, which is my way and of those like-minded. Here, symbolic thinking is missing, in which we understand things by considering the difference between us and everybody else, and realizing that a single thing may have multiple meanings depending on who is on the other side. For someone who operates like this, it will be very hard to understand all the circumstances involved in laws that allow abortion on some occasions. The idea of a baby will only entail the primitive notion of someone who could be me, threatened by evil people who kill babies. It may sound silly at first, but it's actually quite frightening if you think about it. Does this mean that we should enable hatred against freedom of choice of women or couples who may have legal reasons to have an abortion? 
Most certainly not. But we can't expect to react hot-headed and upset with someone who tends to feel persecuted and expect they won't feel attacked and change their mind. It's not about enabling their perspective. It's about being smart and using an approach that may promote some personal growth on the other side. We must give some understanding to take some understanding. Now, I won't tell you a formula on how to engage in a debate with someone who is anti-abortion, but I'll share something to keep in mind. First of all, don't react to your irritation with angry behavior and don't lecture them as if they were stupid. You will only make them feel persecuted and perceive you as someone who is not trustworthy. In pre-symbolic thinking, body language and the tone of your voice precedes the content of what you say. Always try to understand first what is their personal concern regarding abortion and only then try to explain how science and the law will protect the wishes of both parties so that everybody will feel protected. That's the core of the conversation. Think about it.